teenagers. I believe teenagers are God's revenge on mankind. I really do. I think, I think one day the good Lord was looking down over his creation and said, let's see how they like it to create someone of their own image who denies their existence. <laughs> Because I have read the Bible more than once, cover to cover, and it, it never mentions how old the devil was when he rejected God's authority. If I'm guessing an age, I'm saying 16. Devil got his driver's license, drove to Georgia, that's all I know. Hey, you guys, I'm Venus Monique from the hit crime drama Vindication. And you guys should definitely make sure you're catching Maurice Brown show on Roku TV. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Maurice Brown Show. This is Breaking Down the Four Walls, and uh, we've got a great show today. We're not going to talk about teenagers. We can save that for a later show. I'm sure we, we, we could probably implement them into this show. We'll see what happens. We're talking about the Song of Solomon, God's view of sex the right way, and we have a great cast to kick this show off with today, Christian comedians and more specifically, a special guest, actress Maggie Jenny from the hit summer film Running the Bases and the upcoming Pure Flick series Saved by Grace. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show Maggie Jenny. What's up, Maggie? How are you? I'm good. How are you? I am doing great. You have had a busy year, Maggie. I have. Yes. You have had a very busy year. Yes. Uh, and and I think that Running the Bases was a film that kind of hit people out of nowhere. That is a great film. Mm -hmm. If you have not seen it, ladies and gentlemen, I think it still may be in theaters. Am I right or wrong? It, it might still be in some theaters, but it is also available on video on demand. So okay. across all platforms, okay. I think it's in something like 60 countries even. Like it is very wow. widespread, readily available now. So if you have no excuse it. not to watch it. Other than no, 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 we don't have any excuse not to watch it, but you're 100% correct. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and also, Saved by Grace yeah. premieres um, November 6th, so this, okay. I believe that's Sunday, um, okay. on Pure Flix. And okay. then I also have another movie in theaters right now, it's doing private screenings, so you'd have to check the website. But Mind Reader, I believe, okay. if you go to mindreadermovie.com, you can see all of the um screenings and whatnot that are happening across the country. Absolutely. I love it, Maggie. A busy year for you. Yeah. Thank you so much for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. We've got a cast of comedians that are going to join us as we discuss the Song of Solomon, God's view of sex the right way. We're going to go all the way out to Tennessee and bring in our first guest, Christy Condor. What's up, Christy? Hey, what's up, Maurice? Hello. Hey, Chris Hi. Christy, the volunteers are number one. How do you feel? The who? Uh, the Tennessee volunteer. Houston Astros pitched a no hitter last night. That's where I, I'm. I, I keep forgetting you're a Texas girl. I am a Texas wow. girl living in Tennessee. And um, yeah, go Astros. <laughs> go Astros. They tied it up last night. So, yeah, uh, we'll a no see. hitter. Second in the, sorry, second in history of the World Series. First in uh, a combined no hitter. So I know a little bit about baseball, but I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. Did you think Jeff Allen had a point about teenagers? Was he hitting on something there? I would say for girls, it's 14. Okay. Mm. <laughs> no, but you know, here's the deal with the girls. They will always um, acknowledge your existence if they need money from you. That's most people. Mm -hmm. That's Girl, exactly uh, right. Megan. I, I used to teach eighth grade and I used to have so many moms come to me and go, what am I doing? What am I supposed to do? I don't know what to do with this, th this thing, this child. I don't know what to say. I don't, I can't say anything right. They're rolling their eyes. And I go, is she 14? Yes. Yes. <laughs> normal. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Her yep. back. They do come back. That's the thing. They come back emotionally and yeah. You just they have to do be come back. They do you come back. Be available. My sweet son, last I took my sweet son who's in college to lunch yesterday because he's in college locally. 
And it was so sweet. He was telling me all about college. And then he folded his hands on the table and he goes, how are you, mom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I know. It was so sweet. That's I great. love it, Chrissy. That's beautiful stuff. We're going to go out to Oklahoma and bring out our Ooh. next comedian, Mr. Leon, the jokester. What's up, Leon? How are you, bro? Hey, guys. How you guys doing, man? Hey, Leon, look, I hope you're taking notes on our commentary about teenagers. I know you've got a young one that's just about to enter that that level of life. Today is his birthday. He turned 12. Okay. Well, well, happy that's awesome. Birthday. Happy birthday to him. Thank Bless you, him. guys. Thank you. So he, he's ready, man. He, and I'm ready, too, not for him to get the driver's license, but I am ready for him to grow up. Yeah. You will be ready for him to get a driver's license once he gets a driving permit. Because... They want to drive all the time anyway. So you're like, great. I can't wait until I no longer have to sit in the car with you. Yeah. See? So, so, that, so that's going to be a good day. Run to the store for me. Run to the store right? for me. You're like, okay. Totally. Huh? <laughs> so uh, we got comedian Jason Earls talking about his oldest is God now. You know, Jason's got like about six kids. So he's going it, to, it's a process. The oldest, I think they're twins, Jason, correct me if I'm wrong. They're gone. They graduated together. I had an opportunity to be at the graduation. He had the, a special ceremony in his backyard for the kids. Great big party. Uh, it's going to be okay, Jason. Don't cry. Don't cry. They'll come back and visit and all that stuff. Man. Don't, don't, don't worry about that. We're uh, all the way in Arizona. Okay. Well, they'll, they'll come back, Jason. Jay, they'll come back. Uh, which you may not want them to come back. Anyway, let's go out. Let's stay out in Oklahoma with Michelle Van Dusen. What's up, Michelle? Oh, um, I just became a grandma. So listening to this about girls needing all the money, you're making me nervous. You're making me completely nervous <laughs> over here. So, yeah, and my boys have gone. So I get it all. But uh, yeah. grandparenting, I don't know what to do now. It's It's a girl. And I raise yeah. boys. So what am I supposed to do? Like, just give her like Barbies and lipstick? Yeah. I have no yeah. idea. A little scared. Well, no, down Michelle, here. Barbies and lipstick always work. You can go mm -hmm. with that. Sparkles. Yeah. Every work yeah. for my boys. Always sparkles. So. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just go with and the so old, much music. old school stuff. Like, it'll music. just, it's loud, but in a different way. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Loud, but in a voice. different way. I love that. Uh -huh. Absolutely. 100%. Always performing. My kids were always performing. My girls were always performing. Always. Yep. Well, Christy, all they're right. all of them perform. You know, they just True. perform. I, I'm going to leave it alone. Let's go <laughs> back out to my old stomping grounds with our good buddy, Don Davis Womack. What's up, Don? How are you? What is up, everybody? <laughs> and done. welcome, Hi. maybe, to the show. Yeah, yes. I, I was confused for a minute because you're humorous yourself. I thought you were a comedian on the show. <laughs> yeah. No, Maggie's awesome. Ma Maggie could be a comedian <laughs> very easily if she wanted to be. Yeah. Uh, which is why I love having her on the show. Don, how's everything going in Virginia? Everything's going great. I'm just wondering what it would be like to raise a girl. And expensive. Have, it's expensive. Right. It's expensive. And my son's 29 <laughs> now. And he didn't he didn't really ask for a lot of money. He used his charm and his wit to scam people, I think. <laughs> 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 Especially in this day and age, when you're raising you know, a daughter, I get messages forwarded to me from like, in, like yesterday, I get this message from her on Instagram and I'm like, oh, it's going to be like a cute reel or something. She No, mm -mm. it's a sweatshirt she wants for Christmas. And I'm like, see, now, see, now, meanwhile. During school hours, she's at school sending me things she wants me to buy her for Christmas. I'm like, girl, please. First okay. off, no, I will find this cheaper. You apparently <laughs> think money is free. What is wrong with you? Yeah. <laughs> and see, compare that to my experience. We would go to JMU football games, this, you know, and, and my son, this would be when he was not, you know, playing high school football. So the next day he was off and we'd go to the game and we didn't, we didn't, we said, you need any money for concessions? He's like, no. We're like, okay. And the next thing we know down in, in the, on the field, he's on the field walking across us with his friends, and he's got a hot dog and some French fries. And some <laughs> now, my daughter can do both. She can scam people out of money, but she also wants money. If I said, if I ever offered her cash, she would never turn it down. She needs money <laughs> sure, but then she might keep that money and still scam one of her friends to buy her the hot dog. That's just resourceful. That's all that is. Exactly what it is. And we, would ask exactly him about it. we would ask him about it, and we'd say, Where'd you get it? He'd say, don't worry about it. 
<laughs> well, you know, you know, Don, your your and your son, Don't worry, he man. ended up being a big time NFL football player, which right. I mean, you know, it just kind of showed some of his skills early that that's where he was heading. But <laughs> that <laughs> that being said, let let's dive into our uh, study today. We kind of caught Maggie a little bit off guard. Didn't realize we were going to dive in. Nope. On the subject of sex <laughs> and song Solomon. Yeah, that was a fun but, surprise. Like, yeah. What, what are we talking but, about? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that being said, we're gonna we're gonna be very gentle. We're gonna be, just get into this subject, and we're, we're gonna make it very family friendly. And before we get started, Michelle Van Dusen, how about opening us up in prayer? Mm. All right. All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this opportunity for us to come together and discuss your word. We mm -hmm. know that where two or more of us are gathered in your name, there you are. And I'm asking you, Lord, that the that our hearts and our listeners hearts are open to hear from you, mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit works through our words to minister to those that are listening. We thank you for this in Jesus name. Amen. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So we're in Song of Solomon, chapter two. And we got, I'll tell you right now, Maggie, you're going to enjoy this discussion. It was a great discussion we had last week. And we were talking about how uh, sex has affected the church uh, in a lot of ways that you wouldn't expect. Uh, and we started out, and matter of fact, what I'm going to do is just start out uh, with verse one. In Song of Solomon 2, and we will pick up where we left off in verse 8. I am a rose of Sharon, a lily of the valleys. This refers to Jesus Christ, um, uh, which is the purity uh, of love at its highest. Verse 2, like a lily among thorns is my darling among the young women. Like an apple tree among the trees of the forest is my beloved among the young men. I delight to sit in his shade, and his fruit is sweet to my taste. Let him lead me to the banquet hall, and let his banner over me be love. Strengthen me with raisins. Refresh me with apples. For I am faint with love. His left arm is under my head, and his right arm embraces me. Daughters of Jerusalem. I charge you by the gazelles and by the does of the field. Do not arouse or awaken love until it so desires. Listen, my beloved. Look, here he comes, leaping across the mountains, bounding over the hills. Now, that's about as pure and as tame as you can get. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty darn awesome because that is how a woman should view a man we were talking the last uh, on the last show that you know a man doesn't have to be adonis or have blonde hair down to his backside necessarily to be beautiful as long as from within he's pressing into the kingdom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and and this mm -hmm. is a spiritual view of what a man ought to be mm -hmm. and a woman ought to feel that way about her man like, mm -hmm. this guy is unbelievable. I've got to have him. I've got to be with him. And, and that is God's intention of true love. Of course, in a holy matrimony, mm -hmm. which we don't have in our society today. We were talking a little bit before we came on, Maggie, uh, uh, you and I and Leon about, well, I think you and I were talking about TikTok and how social media and Instagram is totally distorted. Yeah. The view of sex. It's like we look at it now and we go, OK, wow. Well, you know, we weren't that bad. Christy Codder, you made the point that, uh, Maurice, oh, I think you're forgetting. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we, we were pretty bad. You know, this this, is, this uh, wasn't documented at the same level. Yes. For, yeah. And, uh, and unfortunately, it wasn't so readily available. True. That's exactly. True. Exactly. Yeah. That's what makes this culture about as bad as it is worse than it's ever been because yeah. as you accurately stated maggie the access to it you know there's just, and, there's a very real and and i'm now the one who's not keeping it g-rated sorry but uh there's a very real <laughs> statistic that absolutely is terrifying to me but it's real and i think people need to know it um the average age that a child gets a cell phone is anywhere between eight and ten years old yeah mm -hmm. yeah and the average age that children first view pornography is between that's eight correct. and ten years old that's correct yeah yep 
And they say when that happens, I've heard it said that the 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 child's mind mm -hmm. is is for all intents and purposes erect mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. lack of a better word right. for life. For yeah. life. That's yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. Um and and yeah, so this is what, you know this is what's happening stimulated that should not be stimulated in a chemical reaction in addiction yeah. forms and it's just it's devastating it's devastating yeah. mm -hmm. absolutely devastating and and we're <laughs> here's what's really bad it's like okay in your household you may say uh hypothetically i'm throwing out well i'm not gonna allow my child to have a cell phone until they're 12. Some people go, oh, it's gotten so bad. Some people are like, hey, they'll be 18 years old before they get a cell phone. They'll like, be 50. <laughs> right? Right? Until they can pay the bill themselves. <laughs> Come well, on. Here's, here's, here's the problem, though. The problem is those are those are great house rules, but the, right. the children have to leave the house. Mm -hmm. And then so they're, they're, it, does no, it does no good to protect them from the world because then they're not prepared for the world. And so you right. have to have those card right. conversations that are are not comfortable for anyone. Let's be real. No. They're not comfortable for the kids. They're not comfortable for you. But you have to yeah. have those hard conversations. You have to give them enough freedom, you know, it, after equipping them and, and educating them and teaching them, you know, why these are the rules and why all of these different things. But then allowing yeah. them age appropriate levels of responsibility for them to screw up and then realize mm -hmm. I screwed up and how do I correct that? All of that while they're still under the umbrella of your home, because otherwise you're literally throwing them to the wolves. You can only yeah. keep them packaged in this little bubble wrap for so long. And then if you send them out into the wild, yeah. they're not yeah. gonna make it. It's like releasing a lion from the zoo into Africa. Good yes. luck, mm -hmm. it's not gonna yeah. happen. <laughs> Good luck, Maggie, that's it. Yeah. Um, I, I And I, I, I love what you just said because, you know, our children, well, mine are all big now. Most of our kids are big. Some of you guys are still raising them. But when they go out into the you know, neighborhoods, when they go to school, when they join ball teams, clubs, all that stuff in school, well, the, we got kids out there that are completely off the rails. Mm -hmm. And they're coming mm -hmm. from homes where there are no rules. And they've mm -hmm. had cell phones since they were like five and six mm -hmm. and yada, yada, yada. And so our kids – that we protected are engaging with them. So, well, well, if they don't have a cell phone to look at this stuff, their friends do. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and, it, and it, it's not just a matter of does, do they have a cell phone? Do they not have a cell phone? Do they have access to it? It's more of like, you have to equip them and it's not just in this one area. It's across the board. Like yeah. with the emotional stability to be able to say, yeah, I'm not doing that. Like, and, and yeah. so that's across the board, like peer pressure is very real, but it's like, it's not just being like instilling right and wrong in our children. That's, of course, what we want to do, but we also have to be building them up as people and pouring into them as people going, you have value. You know, yeah. the things that you put into your mind, they're going to stick to your heart. You know, like you need to be cautious of that. And if these people are trying to lead you down this path that you don't want to go or you know you shouldn't go and they're going to give you grief about it, they're not your people. But building them mm -hmm. up in such a way that they feel confident walking away from that. And going, yeah, yes. I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want you yes. to be part of my circle. Like, it's okay to have a really tight circle as long as they're good for you. But it that goes beyond just the whole, like, here are a bunch of list of rules. It's like that mm -hmm. when you have your kids and you're taking them to church when they're little, like, you're facilitating that relationship with the Lord. And, and you're teaching them right from wrong. But especially in those, those teenage years that we were talking about earlier, you know, like, it shifts. And it's no longer about what is my, what do my parents think. It has to be what do I think. What yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. And so it has to shift into a personal responsibility. And I Absolutely. think the positivity that goes with that too. And let's think of it this way: like, for example, my my daughter, that's my middle daughter, that's twenty four. She uh, has a boyfriend, and they went to a, a you know a corporate party, corporate Halloween party, and she was like, kind of dumbfounded at this corporate kind of party that how what the women were dressed in she's like mm -hmm. what year is it you know she was going this is ridiculous these are adults right. right and she had her boyfriend with her and he was like and she said he turned to her and was like these people these girls are somebody's daughter this is yeah. Yeah. sister and she said she kind of made the comment she said i can't even compare to this and he was and he looked at her and he was like there's no comparison mm. and he mm. was very sweetly and i said look how that's his positive outlook at women. Mm -hmm. So he's been taught to view women 
as valuable and and all that sort of thing. So it it was a I said to her, I was like, look, it was a turnoff for him. He's like, yeah. this is not what women should be mm -hmm. doing. He was like, I value you way more mm -hmm. than what they're trying to put out there. And I was like, okay, yay for his mom and dad. You know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. he said, look, yeah. women should be valued. And, and right, this, right. this is not, this doesn't oh. appeal to me. This isn't something that I, I just thought it was a positive spin on we value women and, and men in different ways, not as objects, but as people. And so that's a positive yeah. thing to teach rather than say, don't do this. Say, well, this and is it how goes, you look at it. It goes deeper than that too. Like, so people who dress like that, and it's not just women, you know, there are oh, men who, who, who will try very hard to get the attention type of a thing. It's not quite as blatant usually, um, but it's that need for external <laughs> validation. Right. <laughs> Oh, that's that's right. over there. Um, is that I need someone else to tell me my value because I don't know it. And it's not yeah. necessarily a self-esteem issue because sometimes, you know, like it, it's just, it's, it's a, I don't value myself. I don't mm -hmm. know where I place because I don't know where my value is found. I need yeah. it from other people. And so yep. it's, it's pouring into your kids, but it's not just kids. This is guys, we need to pour into our friends like this, our family like this. This is not just for those formative years. This is also for people who, who grew up chaotically, who, yeah. you know, aren't taught these things, who are, you know, those poor women at this corporate party dressed, <laughs> you know, they don't know where their value is found. <laughs> and so because of that, they, they only reason that they feel great about themselves is when someone tells them they're beautiful or they're smart mm -hmm. or whatever. They don't know they're beautiful. They don't yeah. know they're smart. They need and to it, tell them. It's, it's their identity. I mean, if you look at how most Americans raise their children, they turn on the TV as a babysitter. So Disney, oh yeah, you can watch all the Disney films you want to without watching what their kids are watching or, or sitting mm -hmm. down and discussing things that they are allowing their mm -hmm. kids to see. Mm -hmm. And now there is no more hidden adult jokes in yeah. a lot of the films that they're watching. Now Blatant. it's blatantly out yeah. there. And mm -hmm. it's like, oh, hey, you could do this. You could do that. You could do this. And it's because it's, there's no longer a regard for family, no longer a regard for God's word, no longer regard for purity. <clears throat> And mm -hmm. so, so why are people dressing like, um, you know, well, or undressing the way that they've been in, in Halloween's a big thing. Oh, let's dress. Like, stop. Just stop. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, we got this anything go society that we're creating and yeah. with and shock and awe. Like, yeah. man, if I don't, if I don't go big, no, I won't get noticed. Right. And I, yeah. I feel like too, that that's something that's so sad is that, you know, to be noticed for something as superficial as the way you look. Like, let's be real. Who cares? Like in the nicest way possible. I don't care if you're a smoke show at 20. Eventually that's going away. Okay. Yeah. Eventually it's going away. See, so you, you, you noticed it, Maggie. You noticed it. That's right. It goes away. Okay. 20. Oh, smoke yeah. all right. So, so, yeah. Smoking here has only asked for so long. And then you got to gotta rest in something else. I hope you have a great personality. Like, you know, it's just, yeah, it's so superficial. And, but it's because it's so easy and quick and cheap. It's that mm -hmm. microwave mentality, you know, like, yeah. I know I'm going to feel great if I dress like this. I know I'm going to, if I, if I do my hair, it's especially for like, a moment. It's from, it's just a moment. And they're it's not, not really creating me. like, oh, uh, the viewpoint of boy, what a beauty. It's, mm -hmm. it's, they're creating lustful thoughts. Yeah. They're not yeah. thinking of you as a, as a whole person. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, they're just like, oh, that's hot. I want that. That's lust. That's not. Mm -hmm. And it's a moment by moment by moment thing. Yeah. And that's yeah. the same thing that Maggie was talking about, how your brain is firing on certain yes. neurons and stuff. And so you're hitting those moments. And then like, well, I got to have that again. I got to have that again. Yeah. But you're missing the, that Satan has always, uh, come against our relationship with God since the garden of Eden, that's been his goal. That's right. And so, so it doesn't, you know, what's the first thing they were naked and unashamed. Mm -hmm. So now, now people are naked and, 
and ashamed and they don't realize that they're ashamed. So they keep covering it up with something different, with something different. Well, now I feel good about this. Now I feel good about that. And, I, and they just keep finding these little moments that are destroying them in the end and they don't know it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leon's, <laughs> Leon's keeping quiet. That's funny. Hey, Dave, I'm on the, Dave. On the podcast with the Golden Girls. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. First off, we should be so lucky as to be able to solve the world's problems in our moo moos in the kitchen in the middle of the night. Okay, that That's is right. my retirement plan. And Maggie's not That's playing right. around. <laughs> and I'm not blessed. She's a famous actress. Girls. She's not playing around, Susan. No, 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 I already have a list of girls that I am ready to invite to my golden girl house facility. I got Sandra Bullock. <laughs> I'm gonna well, be Sophia though. Let me here, let me play Sophia. Oh. Here, here, here's an interesting comment made also by Dave Ebert. And I, I like your uh analogy, Maggie, of, of the smoke show. But anyway, he said, every time your kids have something to say, no matter how small or silly, give them time. Good. Teach them that whenever they have questions, they can come to you. And that's a great yeah. point, Dave. Yeah. You know, uh, a lot of times we get so busy and caught up with what we're doing, we don't think that their questions are significant enough to really just stop everything and just sit down. Hey, let's let's, you know, conversate. Uh, so and that makes a big difference down the road, you know, because well, kids, go, you know, to, to fully engage, too, because how many times have we done this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we can. Mm -hmm, yeah, no, that's great. <laughs> like, but then we get frustrated when we're having a conversation with them and they're doing the same thing. We're like, well, yeah. first off, why wouldn't they? They've learned it from us. Um, yeah. But also, like, if you're not truly giving someone your full attention, you're teaching that. It's like I, I've told this to my kids a few times. How the, the behavior you tolerate from people, you are <laughs> teaching them how to teach you, how to treat you. Treat you. Correct. So, yeah. So if you are treating others like this half distracted, especially your kids, kind of a thing, they're not going to, one, in turn, value that relationship with you because you're not truly pouring into it. But if you want your kids to trust you, you have to also be honest. It's one thing to, to be open and to listen to them. That's important, valuable, absolutely. But then you have to be age appropriately honest. You can't shade around the questions that make you uncomfortable. You can't be like, ah, mm -hmm. you have, you have to have the uncomfortable conversations. You have to answer the questions, honestly, even if you're squeamish, um, if yeah. you don't know the answer, you need to go find out and then come back because the last thing you want your kids doing is Googling anything like at all. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> That's but if they learn that they can trust you, then they'll yeah. stop asking you. Mm -hmm. They will. They will. Mm -hmm. uh, you're watching the Maurice Brown show, breaking down the four walls with actress Maggie Jenny and comedians Christy Condor, Michelle Van Dusen, Don Davis Womack, and comedian Leon the Jokester. So, and we're going to continue this conversation next week with uh, Cameron Arnett. Uh, and a guy that you had an opportunity to uh, appear with in Running the Basis, and also he's in the Pure Flick series, yep. Saved by Grace. He's going to be with us next week as we continue to talk about this. But I, I'll tell you right now, if you really look, and you <laughs> you made the comment about the moo boo, uh, Becky, <laughs> and uh, I, I I love it because <laughs> let's 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 just be one hundred here. Let's be fully transparent on this, okay? Men are responsible for the problems that are in the church. And and we we threw some some numbers out last week. Uh, I'm sorry. What's going on? What happened? Uh oh, Michelle. Talk to <laughs> uh -oh. Humans are responsible. We for are, the we are left. <laughs> but, but, but don't, don't just lump it on men. It's, what, what did it, you say, it, uh, Michelle? It takes two. Don't just lump this all on. Well, men. yeah, it does. It does. It okay. Does. Okay. So the if you reason... say mankind, okay, go ahead. All right, all right. <laughs> mankind. Okay. Well, no. Let me let me throw some numbers out here too. We talked about it last week. If you look at the Islamic faith, Jason, there are, there are and, and <laughs> uh, no, Jason Earls. I'm live right now. Marge is talking. I'll hit you right back. Yeah, I know people this like real that. life. Is this okay. happening? Yeah. <laughs> they keep calling Maggie like pure flicks. <laughs> you know that you flicks. can turn it on silent, right? <laughs> oh, man. That's I got funny. an old school phone, Maggie. You're not even giving 3. us the attention we just <laughs> talked about. It's an iPhone 3 and a half. this feel <laughs> so, so, wait, and, and, hold, and, and Michelle Van Dusen, look at this comment by Dave Ebert. He says, men are are supposed to be the head. Mm -hmm. So, I, yeah. and, and look, I don't want this to sound chauvinistic at all. But I, God does put responsibility 
on a man to They're lead his home. They have to be accountable. He's got to be accountable. He's got to, if the man is not accountable, if he's out of place, the home is just not going to function the way it's supposed to. Mm -hmm. And that's biblical. And that's what I meant by that. And if you look mm -hmm. at the Islamic faith, there are more men that go to synagogue in the Orthodox Jewish faith and in Islam than in the mainline Christian church. You know, and, and then the numbers are skewed 44 to 46 women over men that go to church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so and then, then we brought out the fact that pornography oh, is yeah. a huge problem. Huge. It's the, the real Christian pandemic, church. quite frankly. It really is. Well, mm -hmm. and statistically speaking, if 97 percent of all pastors polled said they are not they do not feel adequately equipped to deal with a pornography problem. Right. 97 percent. Mm -hmm. it, that that is amazing and and a lot of the issues are coming from the pulpit mm -hmm. and 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 so how are you going to lead this generation down the right path when you're looking at those kind of numbers and i i, I tell you right now we talked about it quite openly and honestly last week christy condor leon uh michelle and don you all of you were very forthright mm -hmm. and forthcoming about some things that you know you've been dealing with and what have mm -hmm. you and it's all over the church. Yeah. It's all over the church. And Maggie, Jenny, to your point about the, the quick access to it, it's mm -hmm. it's like it's never been like this mm -hmm. uh, no. since the existence of man. I mean, there's just the quick access to it. And it's just everything's gone completely sideways and it's affected the Christian church. So, Michelle, I mean, I don't, I mean, I didn't, I'm not, look, I Michelle, hear you. I hear you now. I hear you. <laughs> Go ahead, take the blame. Go ahead, go on. Go on. This is totally fine. It's fine. Everything is fine. Everything is fine. It's fine. It's fine. We're fine. I'm not. I'm not discounting. You know, hey, look, it, it takes two to tango. I get all of that, but yeah. at the end of the day, you know, men have got to be responsible for what's yeah. happening in their homes. And a lot of these kids, we're living a time too where I've never seen more young people that want to and or slash are committing suicide. Yeah. And depressed. I mean, just depressed. And it's like you're trying to understand, well, what is the problem exactly? You know, what is what is precipitating this? Mm -hmm. You know, and they, they say, well, you know, you got bullying and this is going on. Well, bullying's gone on for a long time, you know. Yeah, but however, it's the same thing. It's the ability to be able to to say horrific things you would never say. You would never say to someone's face, but you can hide behind a screen. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Exactly, Maggie. To your point, once again, social media has made this thing a different animal. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, 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 and people the finding their value in the likes and the comments on their content, as opposed to who they are as people, as who God created right. them to be. Yeah. Not and, realizing and that hope it comes from Go God. Ahead, no, I'm just saying, and and not knowing that there's that their hope and their joy comes from God. They don't see that they have a purpose in their life. So when they don't mm -hmm. see a purpose anymore, yeah. then they're gonna take their life because what's the point? Who's gonna notice them gone? Comparison's the thief of joy. So you get on mm -hmm. social media, and you know only and no one posts bad things rarely, unless they're just looking for attention. But uh, yeah, you know, for the most part, everyone edits and post just the very best of the best. And then you're mm -hmm. this child sitting here. And I say child, it doesn't matter if you're a teenager or not. You're a child. All right. You're a child. Um, and you're comparing yourself against these edited images that are not accurate. And, you know, it's not just magazine covers anymore. It's your friends. And yeah. you can see the comments and the likes and you feel less and less valuable with every single thing that you're viewing. And especially if parents are not actively speaking into that child's life and actively viewing their social media and keeping tabs. And I'm going to be really honest, most parents don't. They don't do it. But and there so, is a shift. I will say they're starting to be this shift. Like my son asked me, what do I think was going to be different in 20 years? Mm. And I said, you guys have this, this Gen Z group has a, has, is starting to realize those things. Mm -hmm. Like be real is now the biggest thing. Yeah. Yes. It is. I just heard about that. It, yeah. Because they are fighting back against that perceived it's all fake. And so they're going for a more authentic social media presence. And be uh -huh. real says you can't fake that. No, I mean, it's, or it's hard. Yeah. So my, my son is like, he's very much into the, oh, he wants to go back to film. This was the other thing. They're going back to actual film cameras because it's not, wow. it's not, and, and camera sales have gone through the roof because 
they want that delayed gratification almost. They're they're thinking that's novel, which I thought was fascinating. There was a whole piece on CBS that they talked about that film is making a comeback because hmm. this generation doesn't want the filtered, edited. They want the surprise of of putting uh, you know film into <laughs> giving somebody else the film and getting it back and seeing what they got. They think that's yeah. so far. Oh, are you talking about Super 8, like a Super 8 uh, yeah. camera? I, yeah. Oh, that's what that, that capability. They Polaroid. Have. Polaroid. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you. yeah. Because right. it's, it's you can't edit it. So my mm -hmm. son is like, I want a film camera. I'm like, I think I got one in a storage. Right? <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So they, they think it's so not. My son went and got, he said, Mom, can you take me by Walgreens? I had some film done, at, or film made into pictures. And I was like, okay. He comes back out and he goes, I had to pay for it. Uh -huh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's all novel until you realize it costs what? money. Yeah, yeah. He goes, I feel like the like making it into pictures came with the cost of the film. It's called oh, being wow. developed, Christy. It's called uh, having yeah, films yeah, yeah, develop. yeah. developed. Yeah. Developed. Okay. <laughs> and then you're like, this one my finger really? was in, and you're like, you're right. You have to pay for that this one. Still. Right. <laughs> okay. the part. When he was in, uh, he was at a junior college out in East Tennessee. He said, I just walked in and just took it and left. Like he had it developed oh, so and then you stole it. Oh, you stole it. <laughs> you stole it. That's what happened. Well, he was like, I didn't know. <laughs> All right. Anyway, well, guys, so that's, I, I, there, there, I wonder if there is this generational shift away from the phone. Like my daughter, who's who's married 29 or 28, she 20, 20 whatever, 20, she's like, She's in that generation that grew up with a phone. And now she's like, I don't want to give my kid any day. You know, when she finally asked me, I don't want to give my kid a phone. Right. I don't want And I'm like, right. so this generation yeah. I feel like is going to get tired of that and go to the novel thing of not. Right. I don't know. Right. Well, let's pray for that one. Yeah. yeah let's definitely well, they got a that. new thing out now. We, we've gone from Lord help us all. We've gone from TikTok to story. What's this new thing they got out now? Insta story? That's stories or something. I don't know. You know anything yeah, about I mean, it? Yeah, just on social media where it is it's TikTok for Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, that's okay. real. But okay. um, yeah. But stories are yeah. It's just twenty four hour basically posting and then it disappears. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Snapchat um, for stories. They say it disappears. <laughs> well, yeah, it doesn't really disappear. It's not really yeah. available to everyone. Nothing ever disappears. It's available for a week. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing ever really disappears. Leon, it's time to vote. Leon, did you, <laughs> yeah. did you have a phone, Leon? You thought this was about um, sex. This is about yeah. voting. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, guys, hey, let's take a quick break. We're going to come back right after this. Everybody stand by. <laughs> The Maurice Brown Show, breaking down the four walls. Catch actor-comedian Maurice Brown as he hosts a panel of comedians leading a lost and dying world to the light of Christ with humor and spiritual insight. I think about, you know, going up on the mountain to go kill his son, and I'm like, he's, he had to be a teenager because I, I want to kill my teenager. So this was a Christian spoken word event? Uh, my husband has a brother. And you dropped the N-word? We would have been choosing our husbands in a whole different way. <laughs> Okay, you go, then I got him. <laughs> Dennis, what do you think, buddy? What's the question? <laughs> Wait a minute, Leland. Hold on, dude. If we always build our careers on not saying what's offensive to some, to the weaker, then we will always be unstable in our comedy career. There was um, like a giggle gospel, and you were going to laugh the Holy Spirit into your life. I didn't know anything about salvation as a kid, so I thought it was funny. You're sitting around with your ashy camera lens. I'm out of here. I'm gone. Yeah. You got an ashy camera lens. That's what it is. And then there was another one where it was barking like a dog. <laughs> Lily, come back, Lily, please. Yeah. <laughs> There's a big difference between a man coming to him and a rich young ruler coming to him. That's ah. why we always start with the King James translation. You don't want to see this running. Except the one whose faith is weak without quarreling over disputable matters. Remember the young men being taken to the restroom to shave if their side were, sideburns were below the ear. Very legalistic. I don't know where they found that in the Bible. That church was in the hood. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Woo! Yes, sir, I love it. That was one of them prayers, Dave, where I needed to follow that up with Aretha Franklin. 
The Maurice Brown Show, Breaking Down the Four Walls. Catch it on Facebook, YouTube, and Pulpit TV Live. And the replay on the Creative Motion Network on Roku TV. All right, guys, get out there, be safe, watch each other's backs. 911, I'm Sergeant Travis with East Bank Police Department. Just here to follow up. Be careful. Be safe. I love you. There is no shortage of issues in this world today. Injustice, inequality, prejudice. Where I grew up, there wasn't no hate about it. I'm on here. They're all covering for Sad. It's like they're addicts. No limits. I don't know what to tell you. Maybe there's one bad choice. One bad choice or I want to go caught. You know what I do know? Is that God doesn't abandon us just because we mess up. With all the shuffling going on, it's gonna create opportunities for those who are going to show how much they want to move on. What do they expect to find in a review? Between you and me, I have a lot of fans on that panel. You never contact him again, or I will come after you. I am so proud of you, but maybe just leave us out of it, okay? We love you, Father. Continue to lead us, guide us, and direct us. Amen. Yes! I love that show. That show is absolutely got to see this uh and cameron arnett is amazing the guy is utterly amazing Maggie, you had an opportunity to be with him and running the bases and also in the upcoming pure flick series uh saved by grace and mm -hmm. he, I, I tell you the guy's an amazing act that's a great and they touched on sex in in seasons one and two mm -hmm. uh they covered the gamut teenage sexting uh, you know, issues with uh, sexual addictions. Mm -hmm. You know, Jared O'Flaherty is not afraid to deal with hard-hitting subjects. No, he's not. Uh, and I, I, they're coming out with season three at the beginning of 2023, sometime at the beginning of that year. I, I don't know if you guys have ever seen Vindication. If you have not, you got to see it. Absolutely. Very binge-worthy. <laughs> Good. Yeah. Leon, have you ever seen it? Yeah, my wife is a huge fan and got me hooked on it. And uh, yeah, phenomenal. Yeah. It Very is well phenomenal. Done. And uh, coming up next week, uh, next Wednesday night at, at 8 p.m. Le look, look, there's Leon the Jokester right there. Leon the Jokester, <laughs> Dave Ebert, Felicia Frazier, Jude Colson, Christy Condor, and Michelle Van Dusen, all going to be here with our main man, Cameron Arnett from Vindication. He was also an overcomer. Uh, we're talking about Song of Solomon. We're in chapter two, and we're talking about sex, God's way. And we're going to pick it up in verses nine and 10, stopped at eight. I'm reading from the NIV, where it reads, My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Look, there he stands behind our wall, gazing through the windows, peering through the lattice. My beloved spoke and said to me, arise, my darling, my beautiful one, come with me. One of the biggest problems also that men have, and I'm kind of trashing men a little bit, but I got to be honest, I have to be 100. One of the problems that men have in our society today is not having a plan, not being able to lead. Hey, babe, come with me. Where are we going? I don't know. See, you got to know where you're going and you got to have a destination. Because the, the, the woman was created to help man do work. And a lot of men have no idea what they're doing. You know, don't have a plan at all. Let's just go get married and have a bunch of kids and we'll figure it out later. No, I don't think it works out too well when you do that. 
you know, and and is and I and I'm I'm not talking about dotting every I and crossing every T, but when you look at the Song of Solomon as we you know begin to get into it, you see how much uh, adoring that goes on from the female to the male. You see how much take charge, come with me, that the male exudes to the female. I I I I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing, and I want to take you with me. Hmm. You know, and and a lot of men in the church are doing, and I and I I'm included, by the way. And so you know, you look. <laughs> I'm not absolving myself from this. Men <laughs> <No. laughs> have to have a better plan, and and you know, you get your kids, and you, you you start teaching them on the fly, and all that stuff. And so what you do, as as a father, is you stop and go, okay, all right, let's stop this process and start teaching your children the right way to do this. Because there's hope. You you could <laughs> this this pattern can be stopped, you know. And someone's gonna have to, you know, take the bull by the horns and, and try to make a difference. You know, I know I my my sons are 26, 24, and I have a 20-year-old daughter, but I tried to lay a template for them. Now, whether whether they I don't know who mentioned this earlier, if it was Maggie, Christy, Michelle, or Don, whether they listen or not at the moment is not necessarily the crux of the issue. Mm -hmm. The crux of the issue is, did you pour the right stuff in? Mm -hmm. Because at one point or another down the road, the cream will rise to the top. Mm -hmm. You know, raise up a child in the way that they should go. And when they are old, they will not soon depart from it, the Bible says. Yeah. And, and you can hold God to his word. He never misses. Mm -hmm. He never misses. God never misses. But it so it's not like it's the the end, you know, this the sad story that we're talking about. Eighty five to ninety percent of men in church addicted to pornography. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many men's conferences. This is one thing I'm wondering about. I don't know how many men's conferences I've attended where they'll call have an altar call for all the men that are addicted that are addicted to this or struggling with this. And they go down to the altar in droves. Mm -hmm. I mean, just more, well, more than half the church of men, the congregants of men, are going down to the altar. Mm -hmm. The thing is, it's at every men's conference that I go to. <laughs> it's like, okay, when are these numbers going to start to genuinely and authentically dwindle? You know, well, there needs to be a plan. That's the thing. Absolutely. Is, is, is the church is yeah. not well equipped to deal with it. That statistic That's of 97% right. of pastors do not feel well equipped to counsel or to treat some sort of pornography addiction is a very real problem. We are not equipping yeah. the saints well, to, well, yeah. to truly step in and intercede and come up because it's not just you know, like you can't just say, well, I'll pray for you. Like that's fantastic. But now right. where's the practical plans come into place. So there right. needs to be a practical plan into how do we actually address this problem as opposed to just acknowledging it's a problem. Well, Leon, exactly. didn't you do that? Yeah. Leon, Leon took that. I mean, that's what he said last time. I mean, he, mm -hmm. he started discipling, yes. started discipling men. I mean, and, and <laughs> did you, did you have to search them out, Leon? Did you have to yeah, try? Well, I, I think the authenticity and the transparency behind all of it, yeah. Uh, to tag on to what Maggie said, it's like being able to get real and not just yeah. like uh the old school way, give a track and give a prayer, and then you never see that person again. Yeah, you feel exactly. better as a Christian, but actually taking those practical steps and saying, Hey, we're gonna meet every Tuesday and Friday, but anytime you have an urge, text me or call me. And, and then go from there. So it's like putting your, your like, it's that sacrificial love that you have for them that, hey, wow. let's do life together. Wow. Instead of just like, oh, I'll just pray. And then, you know, the prayer is great. You know, yeah. First Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. But we have to do life together. That's the journey to, uh, to freedom. That's growth. That's just growth. You can't just walk away. Mm -hmm. I no. you everyone needs their call and everyone I needs a Timothy. You should, you should always have someone who's helping you along your journey and you should always be helping yeah. others. Like it just, that's how, that's how this works. That's how, what we're designed to do. Megan, There's that's how this curriculums. works. Uh, go ahead, Michelle. 
Uh, I was just going to say there are curriculums out there now, uh, small groups for men um, that deal with pornography and how to get free from it. So and it's yeah. not just gotta, men. You got to do some research. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Women. Oh, oh yeah. Women yes, on, men are higher, but it's not just yeah. men. Yeah. yeah. Maggie, no. we, well, Maggie, you're 100% correct. It's not just men, but because of the lack thereof of proper leadership by men, the numbers are increasing for women as far as being addicted to pornography. You're hundred percent correct. It, it's, it's unfortunate. It really is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, and look, let me tell you this too, Maggie, let me just piggyback on what you said about ill-equipped to teach. A lot of men that are supposed to be teaching are addicted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so they're not equipped to help anybody. I mean, they're in the pulpit and they can't get out of this thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, so, they, can I go yeah. back to this this the scripture real quick, going back to, to the Song of Solomon 2. Yeah. There three things that I noticed in this in the chapter two when she's talking to her lover, yeah, the man, yeah. she's Solomon, she's saying basically that there's the three things that she loved in chapter two were his protection, the imita- in intimacy with him, and then his obvious displays of expression from yeah. him. So she felt connected with protection, intimacy, and the way he expressed himself to her. Yeah. So then you get into which is interesting when you get down to verse eight and nine, and when you, uh-huh. what you just read. Then we're moving to her expressions of how he looks good, or how mm-hmm. she looks good. Uh-huh. So we've covered, we've set a foundation, and then we can go to that. You know, I I love it when my husband wears a white shirt, jeans, and his stetson black hat. Dang, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I'm just saying. But that's that's after all this other foundation and 31 years of marriage, that is still the foundational part. And I think what you're going back to, Maurice, is that those are the things we need to teach our kids that there's there's a foundation that needs to come that, you know, that that we enjoy and love first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. then the attraction can come after that in verse eight and nine. Uh- Absolutely. So one, 100%. We, we are going to have to stop right there, but this has been a great discussion. I'll tell you, what? we can go on and on about this stuff. This stuff, this is a great discussion. Kudos to Dave Ebert for bringing this subject matter uh, to mm-hmm. the fore and uh, advising me to dive into this. Before we get out of here, though, let's go around and find out what you guys are going to be up to uh, in, in the uh, upcoming future, starting with Leon of the Jokester. What's up, Leon? All right, what's up, guys? Uh, yeah, so thanks again, Maurice, for always taking out the time and extending the mm-hmm. warm welcome of being a part of the Maurice Brown show. Let's give it up for Maurice. All right. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you. Thank thank you. Up, thank man. You, night man. at the Apollo. All right, so, um, yeah, so I, I have let me cover up, uh, because that's the type of show we do here. We're real Christians, we cover up. <laughs> Thank you, Timothy, in the Bible. All right, so modesty is key. So uh, December 9th, I will be doing a show at a church, uh, Asbury Church, and then December 10th, we'll be out in Henrietta, Oklahoma, uh, fully clothed uh, in the Holy Spirit. In the Holy Spirit. Yeah. All right, that's it for me, guys. Leon, thank you for your discretion. Um, yeah, let's uh, move on to uh, our good actress buddy, Maggie Jenny, who's been very busy this year. Tell us a little bit about what we can expect to see from you, Maggie. Uh, well, I mean, you can catch Running the Bases on uh, Video On Demand platforms, Yeah, I think pretty much everywhere. And mm-hmm. Saved by Grace series will drop on Pure Flips uh, November 6th. I think that's Sunday. It'll premiere. And okay. uh, my movie Mind Reader is screening all over the country in private screening. So mindreadermovie.com to check out that. And, okay. you know, like that's enough for now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Maggie. I love it. I can't wait to see Mind Reader. Uh, Don Davis, Womack, what's going on? Lots of great things. Virginia's for Laughers podcast just dropped okay. another episode yesterday, number 86. That's wow. Exciting. Okay. Um, also... Working with some local comics, doing basement comics on Friday to help develop local talent. Uh, we're teaching our first comedy classes, so we're on okay. our second class this Sunday. And we have our next show uh, Saturday, November 12th at Bricks and Columns Vineyards. Andy okay. Domingo is on that show as our headliner. Oh, love Andy. Love Andy. Yeah, Andy's awesome. 
So yeah, that's enough for me and I'll be clothed for all those events as well. Well, thank you <laughs> once again. Also, Don, for your discretion. On to Michelle Van Dusen. What's, what's going on, Michelle? Uh, I have a stand-up show uh, at Indian Springs Brewing Company, November 19th. So that's out in Missouri. If you want to show up there, come on out. Um, our podcast, the Laugh Smart Podcast, uh, just dropped another episode today, every Thursday. Yeah. And um, then also on Creative Motion Network, uh, my comedy channel is up and running. So check out some of those shorts and things like that. Shorts, like short clips, not <laughs> me wearing shorts, because that ain't oh, ever happened. Like... <laughs> I'm fully clothed. Okay, Michelle, but, thank you. I'm so your... fully clothed. <laughs> Going up my clothes like King David. All right. I am I'm the only great. one wearing a turtleneck right now. I'm just going to point that out. Just <laughs> <laughs> Michelle Van Dusen, thank you for your discretion as well. <laughs> hey, I'm on uh, Talk is Cheap with June Colson, Rhonda Corey's show next Tuesday. I've got yeah. a women's event, speaking at a women's uh, Christmas event in Houston in December. And yesterday, just put out, was it yesterday? I don't even know. Um, YouTube okay, channel just... you can subscribe to Kids Church with Miss Christy. And so it's me doing my Sunday stuff with the kids. So, so yeah. All right. I love it. I love it. And also next Wednesday at 8 p.m., we continue our discussion on the Song of Solomon, God's view of sex, dot, 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 the right way, his way, November 9th at 8 p.m. with Dave Ebert, Leon the Jokester, Fifi Ooh, Frazier, June Colson, Christy Condra, Michelle Van Dusen, and special guest actor Cameron Arnett from the faith-based film Overcomer and the hit crime drama Vindication that's next Wednesday at 8 p.m. If you've enjoyed this show, well, like it and share it. And subscribe to the Maurice Brown Comedy Channel as well as any social media engine that Leon the Jokester and Maggie Jenny and Christy Condor and Michelle Van Dusen and Don Davis Womack are a part of. And every Saturday morning, live, well, not live because we're live now, from Albuquerque, New Mexico on KCHF TV. It's the Maurice Brown Show breaking down the four walls at 12 a.m. and at 8 p.m. You can also hear us on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Radiocast, and Amazon Music, as well as all other major uh, audio platforms. You can hear this show. This has been a great show. Maggie, Jenny, thank you once again for being on the show Again, November 6th, we can look for Saved by Grace. And you say Cameron Arnett is also a part of the series. Yes, he is. Awesome stuff. I love it. Cannot wait. And I, I want to thank everybody before we get out of here today, and especially on the behalf of Maggie Jenny, and I'm sure she thanks you. Thank <laughs> you for your discretion. <laughs> I appreciate it. It's been great. You guys have a blessed week. God bless you.